wanted to get your thoughts in on this as well. How attractive does the pricing look? And more importantly, post the equity infusion and the earnings or rather the growth visibility, how much or how can you really justify in terms of a price for Power Grid? I think, uh, what, you know, I agree with what Udyan said. I mean, this is a fairly attractively priced issue. There's a lot left on the table again. Clearly, a 20% uh, return is uh, very likely from these levels, pretty much on the listing, uh, you know, time frame. But I think more importantly, this is, uh, you know, at 13 and a half times uh, multiple uh, in terms of the issue pricing, uh, you know, less than two times uh, price to book. I think this is actually a very, very, uh, you know, attractive opportunity. It's again one of those large cap names that, uh, that gives you the opportunity to, to build portfolios. And I think importantly, at the back of this pricing, uh, even NTPC has actually come off a little, uh, obviously because of the valuation effect. And I think it may be a great opportunity to get into that stock as well, primarily based on the fact that uh, you know one can see a 15-20% return immediately. And I think uh, you know this is also a good thing from the longer term point of view in terms of the overall participation in the market per se, because nothing uh, actually succeeds like a successful public issue to get a larger participation of the wider market in. And my sense is that we saw a turning point with Coal India. I think we've seen a good follow through with Power Grid. At least it seems like that for now. And it might just be what the market's needed in terms of getting the larger, you know, wider participation back into the market, which has been primarily missing over the last two years. Nitin, have you seen some of the other softer commodities like fertilizers perhaps? Uh, that space has been on a roll because of some expectations of a favorable announcement on account of uh, freeing up of urea prices. Is that a space you fancy? I think, uh, you know, again, we've seen some favorable movement primarily based on the anticipation, as you mentioned, but, and I think we've had some positive, you know, announcements already over the last 12 months or so on the fertilizer policy as well. But I think at this point, we haven't really focused a lot more on that sector uh, because we still think there's opportunity actually on, on some of the mainstream sectors as well. But I think, it, you know, as we move forward and, and as things change, we, we might start, start looking at it. Nitin, what were your reactions to the SPI numbers and did it disappoint you highly because of what happened in terms of asset quality and provisioning? I think one has to look at it from uh, you know, two different points of view. I think at an operating level, almost every number is uh, actually fairly good, uh, whether you look at you know, their margins or the growth in their uh, in operating profits. I think the issue really is on two fronts, they've, uh, you know, the net profits have taken a knock and they're probably about 15-80% lower than, and than expectations. Uh, first is the asset quality and I think the, the big one there is the Dubai world exposure has actually been taken as a gross NPA, which is significant not only for SBI but actually also significant for other banks who, was, who still haven't qualified that as a, as a gross NPA. And the second one is the volatility in their operating expenses. So I think one really needs to model in uh, probably a higher level of OPEX going forward because, you know, we've seen that volatility in the OPEX space for SBI for, for about uh, two or three quarters now. Uh, but I think at a, at a broad level, the op, you know, there will be some downgrade in terms of expectations or, uh, you know, from an EPS perspective, but I think the operating performance has actually been fairly good. And that's really where the focus has to be uh, in terms of the, the overall outlook for not just SBI, for actually the whole sector. Nitin, the one risk that people are talking about now with TV2 commodity prices going up is whether all this rush in commodities is actually going to dent us back like it did a couple of years back. Do you see that risk panning out, crude going back to 9,500, other commodities going up leading to inflation and that presenting some kind of a headwind to this market which has not had a major negative trigger in play for the last one year? Yeah, I think there is uh, always that risk from a global macro perspective, primarily from the point of view of crude prices uh, derailing the, the system. But I think uh, one needs to keep in mind that uh, we obviously are in a, in a decontrolled mode right now, at least from a petroleum price perspective, and also have, you know, follow through action on the other uh, crude-based uh, products. So I think to that perspective, we might have some, some level of insulation from a, from a corporate profitability point of view. But obviously there is inflationary pressure, and I think that's why uh, you know, RBI has been pretty much, uh, you know, uh, uh, fairly aggressive in, in countering inflation measures because I think at the back of their mind, they think some of that is, is clearly a possibility as well. So I think one needs to look out for what happens on the crude front. Uh, also, I think, uh, you know, the even though the QE2 number is 600 billion, but I think it might actually end up being closer to 800, 900 if you include the mortgage-backed security buyback program as well. So I think clearly that's a big number uh, for the markets to digest globally. There, you know, there is a gush of liquidity and, uh, and you know, at some point one needs to be cognizant of the fact that valuations are not the only thing but liquidity and momentum will actually take over 
and, and that's when you know you need to start looking at where there might be uh, you know areas where you need to start avoiding those uh, those landmines. Nitin, how do you approach public sector banks now? But this quarter there has been a bit of a provisioning hangover. Do you see that denting back profits uh, going forward as well? Now again, I think uh, again one needs to focus on the operating performance, and I think on most parameters, uh, you know, barring one or two names, you know, we've seen a pretty good momentum. Yes, there has been some overhang, in, especially in a couple of uh, PSU banks on the provisioning front. And as I mentioned, I think the SBI provisioning numbers will obviously uh, put that number, that uh, figure back into scrutiny for all of the banks as well. Uh, but I think um, going forward, uh, you know, from a 18 to 24 months viewpoint, I think we still prefer PSU banks because I think there is a very, very strong tailwind of performance and, uh, and, and growth. And uh, clearly from valuation perspective as well, I think this is a good opportunity to get back into that.